If I have wounded any soul, if I have caused one foot to go, if I
they had a special need earlier this week that they let the church know about and uh, the church was able to assist with that and uh, if we need to continue to help out with that we'll do what we can within our power Amen. and everything but to pray for the situation there they've got the children at least through september possibly could have them permanently it Amen. just depends on how things work out uh, down in florida and so we'll just make it a matter of prayer and ask the Lord's will to be done Bless in me. regard to that. Uh, but thankful for church family and answer prayer. Amen. 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 Anybody else? Word of praise, word of thanks. All right, if no one has anything then, uh, I'd like to return to the Gospel of John, if you would. The Gospel of John, chapter number 8. Uh, we'll pick up reading in verse number uh, 28, and then we'll read down through verse number 36. We're going to be talking about being set free this morning. And beloved, aren't you glad that as a child of God, we have been set free? Amen. Now, nobody likes to be in bondage of any type. Nobody likes to be caged up in any way. Uh, but there are a lot of people today that just do not realize in their lost condition uh, that they are under condemnation. They are, they are under the wrath of God. Uh, they are... Uh, 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 under a spiritual bondage or in spiritual bondage, but they do not have to be that way. If they'll just acknowledge that they're a sinner, ask Jesus Christ to come into their heart and save them, and turn from their sin, and ask God to save them, praise be to God, they can be set free, amen? And Lord, I'm thankful that I have been set free from the bondage, the penalty, the condemnation, the shame of sin, praise be to God. And let me tell you something, the devil likes to remind me of my shortcomings. Sure. I have a lot of individuals that like to remind me of my shortcomings. Yeah. And beloved, uh, uh, the things that they speak may be true, but praise be to God, I've been forgiven, yeah. I've been cleansed, yeah. and I've been set free, and I'm no longer under that yoke and that bondage. Praise yeah. be to God. Yes, Amen. Uh, Romans chapter number 8, let's pick up reading verse number 28. The Word of God tells us, Then said Jesus unto them, when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then ye shall know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always, always those things that please Him. As He spake these words, many believed on Him. Of course, this is making reference to, to His uh, 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 crucifixion that's about to take place. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on Him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And notice verse 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Uh, make you free. Then he answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? Jesus answered them, uh, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth, uh, abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless the reading of the Scriptures here this morning. Dear kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this time that you've allowed us to come to your house to worship thee in spirit and truth. And Lord, we are thankful for this beautiful day that you've made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Father, we're thankful for the breath of life you've given us uh, to enjoy creation and we're thankful for the health and the ability that you've given us uh, to be in thy house this morning. And Lord, we're thankful for your word and for the truth and instruction that we receive from thy word. And Father, as a child of God, we can rejoice and be thankful that we've been set free and that we're no longer under the bondage of sin, we're no longer the servant of sin, and that we've been set free because of our faith and trust in thee. And Lord, I pray now this morning that you'd help me as I preach, give me that anointing of the Holy Ghost to preach with clarity of thought and clarity of speech. And Lord, strengthen my, my lungs that I may be able to declare thy word this morning. And Father, I pray for all of us here this morning that uh, we'll all open up our ears and our hearts to the preaching of thy word, that we'd be closer drawn to thee, and learn something to help us in our daily walk with thee. And Father, I pray that if there's one here this morning that has never trusted thee as Lord and Savior, Lord, I pray that you convict their heart of sin, that you draw them to yourself, and that they come forward this morning and be set free and be born into the family of God uh, family of God, and be saved before it's eternally too late. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for what you've already done. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for what you're going to do. For it's in Christ's name we do ask it all. And amen. And notice here as we go back to, to our text here, 
And verse 28, Then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you shall know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. So Jesus Christ said, And I, and if I be lifted up, would do what? Would draw all men unto Himself. Uh, thanks be to God, and praise be to God, uh, for Jesus' death on the cross of Calvary. Amen. And taking your place, and taking my place, and paying a debt that you and I could never pay, and paying the debt of sin in its own totality, praise be to God. Amen. And notice here, uh, verse number 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Uh, make you free. Uh, beloved, I don't know about you, uh, but uh, I like things that are free, amen? I like it when I get coupons through the mail uh, that says if you buy one thing, you get something free, amen? I like it when you get those emails that says you get something free with a purchase. Hey, that's my kind of talk. That's my kind of language, amen? I like things that are free. That's why I do not understand why man, and I say this, mankind as a whole, uh, uh, rejects the gospel message and rejects the gift of salvation that Jesus Christ offers through the cross of Calvary. I don't understand that. We get excited when we get a free big man. We get excited when we get a free walker. We get excited when we get a free pair of Jesus. But bless God, why shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own home soul? The most important thing we have is not a hamburger. It's not a car. It's not a piece of clothing. Hey, the most important thing we have is the soul that we carry inside. And friend, if you die lost, unregenerate, without Christ, you'll spend an eternity in a devil's hell that was created for the devil and his angels. It does not have to be that way. It does not have to be that way. But yet we enjoy free things all the time. What about the free pardon of sin? The free gift of salvation that's through Jesus Christ. Uh, I think it's Romans 6.23 tells us, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is through uh, Jesus Christ, uh, Christ Jesus our Lord. Hey, salvation is a gift. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And if you're here this morning and you've never trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the free gift of salvation is being extended to you today. Uh, beloved, uh, uh, you just won't wake up one morning and say, today's the day I'm going to get saved. Uh, beloved, a lot of people I think have been misled in regard to their salvation. Now listen, I can't see a person's heart that's between them and God. Uh, but beloved, uh, the Bible says the Lord saved such a one with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. You have to be sorry for your sin and realize that you're guilty before God and that there's a change that needs to take place. And the only thing that will change your eternal destination and pay for the wages of sin is your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross of Calvary. Uh, verse 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you, uh, make you free. It's not what is the truth, it's who is the truth. Uh, in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse number 6, the Word of God tells us, And Jesus saith to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. There's not many ways to be saved. There's only one way to be saved, and that's through the shed blood of Jesus Christ and a personal relationship with Him. You know, people today tell me, Preacher, I, I've heard about Christ. I know about Christ. Hey, I'm glad that you have some intellectual knowledge of Jesus Christ. But do you have a heart relationship with Him? It's one thing to know about Him. It's a totally different entity to know Him as Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ said, I know my sheep and they know me and they hear my voice. Do you know Him on a personal basis this morning? I hope it's a testimony of everybody in this auditorium that's here this morning that can say without the shadow of a doubt, if God were to call you home today, that you know heaven would be your home for eternity. I hope that you can say that. Well, quickly, some things uh, uh, that Jesus Christ uh, has set us free, uh, free from. Uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse number 1 tells us, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Hey, when we get to saved, we have liberty in Jesus Christ. We don't have to live under guilt. 
any longer. We don't have to live under shame anymore. We don't have to live under condemnation anymore. We have liberty in Jesus Christ. Now, it certainly is not a license to sin. Uh, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. You know, we're not to continue on. That's what repentance is. You turn from your wicked, sinful lifestyle and you turn to God and you're no longer a servant unto sin, but you're a servant unto Jesus Christ. The word repent means to have a change of mind or to have a change in direction. You are going this way uh, to a devil's hell, lost in your trespasses and sins, spiritually dead, but now you've repented and you've turned to God and asked God for forgiveness and God saved you and now you become a servant to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Praise be to God. Thank God for that liberty that we have in Jesus Christ. We're not under the law anymore. We're not under the schoolmaster. We're no longer under a schoolmaster. Praise be to God. We're living under the day in dispensation of grace. And we're sent about it. Grace did much more abound. Amen. Amen. Uh, but uh, we're free from the present condemnation of sin. Let me tell you something. The Bible talks about two future judgments that's going to take place. One is called the great white throne judgment. And those that are lost without Christ, they'll stand at the great white throne judgment. The Bible says the books will be opened and they'll be judged according to their works. Uh, the Bible records some sad commentary that day. There are going to be religious people. There's going to be church-going people that's going to stand before Jesus Christ. Yeah. Have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not done these miracles? Have we not done these many wonderful works? And Jesus Christ will look at them and say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never, never knew you. Never, never knew you. you. They put their faith and trust in their works and their own righteousness and putting their, instead of putting their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And they'll be cast into the lake of fire. And bless God, uh, there's another judgment that's going to take place called the Bema Seat of Christ or the Judgment Seat of Christ. And it's for the redeemed. It's for saved people. And let me tell you something, we won't give an account of our sins at the Bema Seat of Christ. That was taken care of at Calvary. But bless God, we will stand to give an account of what we have or have not done since our salvation. Our stewardship. More more was required than stewards that a man be found faithful. Yeah. Beloved, that's why it's important to come to church. That's why it's important to serve God and be involved in some type of ministry, whatever it may be, and do something for Jesus Christ because we will stand to give an account as believers at the Bema City of Christ one day. And so the Lord's taking good notes. Uh, he's taking good notes. We better be busy, hadn't we? Amen. Uh, but uh, we're free from the present condemnation of sin. Romans chapter 8, verse number 1 tells us there is therefore now no condemnation. <laughs> Anthony, wouldn't you glad when Tony stepped in and said, you were set free? So glad. Well, wouldn't you glad? Amen. I've been glad too after I read that list. <laughs> I've been rejoicing. Amen. Uh, amen. But let me tell you something. Aren't you glad that when you bow down and you ask Jesus Christ to save you? I've heard this testimony so many times. Preacher, it was like the weight of the world was lifted off my shoulder. It's like I've been set free. It's like I had a new life. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened to you. Praise be to God. And that weight of the world was the wrath and condemnation of God being lifted off of you. Praise be to God. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Uh, John chapter 3, verse number 18 tells us, He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. One thing I did not realize, until the first time I went through and read the Word of God from cover to cover, I did not realize that before I got saved, that the condemnation of God and the judgment of God was abiding upon me and that I was an enemy of God. I did not know that until I read the Word of God. And beloved, that ought to be an eye opener right there. Amen. I don't know about you, but I would not want to be the enemy of God. Amen. 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 But in our sin state, that's exactly where we're at. That's where we're at. We're free from future judgment of sin. In John chapter 5 Verse number 24 tells us, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Aren't you thankful? Praise be to God. 
Amen. that we won't have to stand before God and say, I'm guilty. Jesus Christ took care of that. Amen. Amen. And then when the devil, our accuser, stands before God and says, Oh, would you look over there and see what he done? Did you see what she said? We have an advocate. We have a high priest who sits at the right hand side of the Father and makes intercession for us. And he'll say, Look, Father, what do you see? Whoa! And he don't see you and I for the sinners that we are. He sees his son's righteousness that's been placed to our account. Glory to God. Praise God that we're saved. Amen. And we've been set free. Amen. Oh, I don't know about you, but that's shout ground material yeah, right there. Yes, yes. Praise be to God. Bless you, Lord. Oh man, I tell you what, if you're not if you're not happy to be saved this morning, you better, you better put your hand on your heart. Yes. If you got a pulse this morning, are you thankful that you saved this morning? Yes, Praise be to God. Yes. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. We might get excited here a minute. <laughs> First Thessalonians uh, uh, chapter one, verse number ten tells us. Uh, and the way for the Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. <laughs> Amen. Well, you know what? We've also been delivered from the bondage of sin. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 6, verses 6 through 8, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. A lot of these people say that they're saved, and they demonstrate no repentance, no change in their life, let me tell you something. The Bible uses a phrase, be not deceived. Right. These individuals are deceived. They're not truly born again. They have, they have intellect, but they don't have heart conversion. It's just that simple. Right. Yeah. You know, old things are passed away. Why? Behold, all things are become new. There's a change that takes place yeah. in a person's heart. That's true, brother. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of uh, uh, the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead, uh, that is dead, is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Romans chapter six, verse number fourteen: For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. And again, in Romans chapter six, verses eighteen through twenty-two. Being then made free from sin. Amen. Hey, we're no longer under the bondage of sin. Your heart has changed towards sin. Your attitude has changed toward, towards Bless sin. Repentance has taken place in your heart. Bless him over. You see. Yes. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. You were the servant of sin, but you repented in turn, and now you're the servant of righteousness. Amen. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants, to uncleanness and to iniquity and to iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants, to righteousness unto holiness. Hey, God still expects His people to be holy. He said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. There ought to be something different about the child of God in the way He talks, in the way He acts, in the way He dresses, His, his reactions, His actions. There ought to be something different about a child of God. Amen. Amen. Too, many, too many Christians today look too much like the world. Something wrong, isn't there? There's something wrong. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. For to be carnally minded is death. And let me tell you something. All those things you do in the flesh, it's vanity. It's not going to bring forth any type of uh, eternal fruit at all. What fruit had you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Jesus Christ said He wants us to go forth and bring forth what? Much fruit until He calls us home. Until we get to heaven. Amen. Amen. That you bring forth much fruit. And then last of all, we'll stop right here because I, I smell that food through them doors back here. Amen. <laughs> And I've been worked up an appetite. Uh, now I fed you spiritually. Now it's time to get ready to go eat physically. Amen. Amen. But you know what? Uh, I have people today say, Preacher, I'm scared. Now let me tell you something. We all, to a certain degree, have fear within ourselves. Amen. And, and, I, and, and, and my fears is maybe different from your fears. You know, he, he's biggest fear is that Tennessee's going to beat Florida one day. Now he's probably not afraid about that. Uh, you know, he's like, That's not going to happen. You know, uh, 
but the fact of the matter is we have different fears. Some, some of y'all scare spiders. I am. <laughs> That's all right, Carl. Uh, some of you might be scared of snakes. All right, I've got, got, got one scared of snakes. Some might be scared of heights. Might be scared of different things. But you know what? In Christ, we've been set free of our fears. And let me tell you something, specifically the fear of death. The Bible says that the last enemy to be conquered is death. And when Jesus Christ arose that third day, the last enemy that was conquered was death because the grave and death could not hold him. Now, beloved, if we're in Christ, death and the grave will not have dominion over us. And the Bible tells us for the believer that when we take our last breath, and by the way, it's going to happen if we live long enough, it is appointed to man once to die, then after this the judgment. Let me tell you something, that's appointment all of us have unless the rapture of the church takes place. If we all live long enough, God's going to call us home. Let me tell you something, this body's going to die, but the Word of God makes it, makes it very clear where our spirit goes. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And the last breath you take here upon this earth, the next thing you'll see will be glory in heaven. Amen? Amen. And so, beloved, we're not to fear death as a believer. You'd be surprised how many people, how many people have come up to me and said, Preacher, I'm scared to die. Now let me tell you something. I'm not scared to die. Do I want to die? No, I don't want to die. It's our natural, fleshly desire to live as long as we possibly can. Because we are experiencing life. You see. And that's understandable. But if God calls me home this evening, I'm not afraid to die. Uh, I found out earlier this week another co-worker of mine has got cancer. I'm not for sure what form, I'm not for sure what stage. And he was already gone for the day. And uh, there was a powwow that took place while I was uh, gone. And he disclosed that information. He had already disclosed it to me privately. And then he disclosed it with the other co-workers. And he was gone for the remainder of the day. Very interesting question this man asked me. Now, this man's a religious man. I really believe he needs to be truly born again. Uh, but here, here's what he said. He said, how did you react when you were told the news that you had cancer? You know, I said, you know, I really didn't know what to say. I really didn't know how to react. But I said, I'll tell you this much. I had no fear. I had no fear. And I know some of y'all in here are cancer survivors and battle cancer. The reason that we can say we have no fear is because of who's inside of us. Amen. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. And beloved, we are free from fear when we're in Christ Jesus. Uh, notice here what the Bible tells us. Uh, two, uh, two, three verses here. We'll close. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is, the devil. Notice verse 15. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. A beloved the believer is not afraid to die because he knows where he's going. Now let me tell you something. A lost person who doesn't know where they're going to spend eternity, let me tell you something. They're afraid to die. And beloved, there's people today spending millions of dollars trying to get their DNA cloned and frozen so that they can live for eternity. Hey, I can save them a lot of money. And I can help them out right now. Bank the money, give it to this church. Amen. We'll invest in some missionaries and some Amen. community projects here to help out and glorify God. But don't, hey, man was created to be an eternal being. And you're going to spend eternity in one of two places Amen. either in God's heaven or in devil's hell. Amen. Hey, you don't have to get your DNA cloned. You've got to make a choice. Where are you going to spend eternity? Amen. Acknowledge that you're a sinner and that you need salvation and you get born again. Amen. And oh, by the way, you'll get a new body when that happens. Amen. <laughs> or if you decide to reject that, you can spend all the money you want to. Because let me remind you of another fellow. We read about him in the scriptures. The rich man, and in hell, lifted up his eyes being in torments. Hey, this guy had a lot of money. It didn't help him. It's not going to help you either. And so you just need to get born again. Yeah. Don't worry about trying to get your DNA cloned. 
just get born again. Amen. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Psalm chapter 23, verse number 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they come for me. And the reason we can not fear death as a believer this morning is because he, thou, art with us. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. And so, beloved, some things we've been set free from. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what, Anthony, you ought to be set free. The thing when you're set free. Yeah. A two-page list like that, goodness, I didn't think he's that bad of a fella. <laughs> uh, you ever talk to Larry about that? That was his list, by the way. But you know what the fact of the matter is? If you're here this morning and you've never been saved, you're condemned and under the wrath of God. But that can be changed before you leave this auditorium this morning. And you can come forward and be saved and be born again. And ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and save you. Amen. And so at this time, if you're willing and able, I'd like to invite everybody to stand, please. Everyone standing, everyone's heads bowed, everyone's eyes closed. Musicians, if you'll make your way over to the instruments. I'll ask a question here this morning. Ask a question here this morning. Maybe there's someone here this morning and the Holy Spirit of God is...